to do is cover now the triptych, which is was where we started actually was here. Oh, there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Don't make me get over there now. <laughs> make me come over there. I used to teach high school. Okay. <laughs> um, the triptych. I brought it with me and it's here on the table and the doors are closed. We brought it though raining because I knew a number of you had not seen it, and really you should see it because it's big and exciting, and so we brought it. Um, so, hey, Nancy, if you could, or Mario, just open the doors of it. Okay. You're going to have to get back, Nancy, because you can see Okay. So there it is. Oh, you have to see it. No, I'm going to go, uh, just to give you some information about this, and so you can see how this developed, I wanted you to, whoops, wrong, wrong way, I wanted you to know the inspiration for this. Um, when Jay Wei came to me and said she wanted to paint this, I thought, first of all, she probably had lost her mind. <laughs> and then I thought, well, let's see, how can we do this? In the Gothic time period, I used to teach art history. In the Gothic time period, this artist, Hieronymus Bosch, he's a Flemish guy, did a large triptych of the garden, they call it the Garden of Earthly Delights. What this depicts is the purity of creation, Adam and Eve, nice pure landscape. Then, the horrors of Earth, all the temptations, the bad things that you could do. And then, the ultimate result, if you're bad, hell. And the hell picture was grueling. I saw, actually saw this when I was in, um, I think it was in Italy, and it's not as big as this. And so he did a, a it, the point is that he was making, putting a lot of content in art to teach people who either couldn't read, didn't have access to books or whatever, or, or lost their attention span. <laughs> so that seemed to be a good way to do this, was in panels. Timeline. We began this May, June of last year and finished it around October 1st. It's six feet wide. When it's closed, it's a three foot square. Those doors are depictions of our temple doors, but of course it's scaled down a bit. It's an acrylic painting on stretch canvases. And these are the, there's some jewels glued on and bindi, things like that to make it kind of 3D. And the door panels are actual plywood with the wood knobs that are spray painted gold and real lion head pulls that are metal. Um, total, there's 68 humans in this and there's tw 10 statues and 12 animals. And it's kind of fun if we were doing this for kids to ask them, can you find them all? And oh, they'll have their hands all over it. So we're not asking. Okay. <laughs> so let's start with the left panel, which is the emperor's panel. I want you to know, first of all, that Every, I didn't make this up. Everything in here comes from ancient sources. Some of this is cave art, and Jay Wei actually uh, sent away for books in China. Some of are photographs as well, um, so that we would have a basis. But you have to see that some of the cave art, the faces are gone, the certain parts of the body are missing. I mean, it, it's pretty rough. So what I had to do was take this art of the time and then make it uniform. So when I show you this stuff, I want you to see the sources here as much as I can. Um, the original paintings of emperors and their clothing and their hat pieces, their head pieces. And what's interesting, this came in kind of late after I had already done him once and I made some changes. This hat head piece is rounded in the front and there's 12 uh, bead hangings here. On either side are jade stabilizers, right? That's what they call them. Um, what they were, this is, this is all part of the tradition of royalty, that those stabilizers were to hold him still. So they did, he didn't get too wild, I guess, to remember that he was royalty and he had to be dignified. And the stabilizers reminded him to walk like, you know, Neil. Neil <laughs> 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 very oh, stabilized. <laughs> <laughs> so here he is, the way he came out, with all of his, um, well, you can't see it so well here, you see it better in the painting, but all these little uh, symbols and so forth are all out of the artwork of the time to show that he's royalty. The center panel, the Buddhas come from the cave art for the most part, 
Here are some of the sources from Dan Huang and from other places. And then the animals and carriages came from a number of sources, statuary as well as paintings and actual um, wheels and things that were left. And we started to bring them in. Let's see how that works. Yeah. So you could see the, a variety of carriages coming from the monasteries. And remembering that in this time, about a thousand monasteries had, and temples had sprung up in Luoyang and just outside because of the emperor's acceptance of Buddhism. And so this parade, what the contents of the parade are, other than street performers, it are every monastery submitting a great Buddha statue on a terrific carriage. But you have to remember that some of the monasteries were rich, like this one. This is a gold casing and a, a very expensive Buddha with real jewels hanging down. Real, the real thing. This is an expensive carriage with all the detailed wood. But back here, not so much. This is not a very rich monastery, so it's just a wood carriage with a nice marble Buddha statue. Okay. So remember, there's quite a variety of statues. And as they paraded into the gigantic gate of Luoyang, which nine carriages could fit side by side coming in that south gate, mm -hmm. um, people offered flowers. And peonies are the flower of Luoyang. So most people offered peonies. But the emperor is offering long stem lotuses. The longer the stem of the flower, the more important the person who was doing the offering. So if you look around, you'll see a lot of people offering flowers and some incense, because that was what they did at the time. The monks, my favorite part. Monks traveled to this from many countries. And so what we're showing you from the original sources, uh, Kumarajiva's pose is here, and Bodhidharma, the Persian monk, has also attended. So in our group, not a great picture, but you can see it, you can see an Indian monk, several Chinese, the Kumarajiva pose right here, and then Bodhidharma with his staff, who actually did come to Luoyang during this time period. So we, this, this may be the one thing we really made up, we made him come to the parade. <laughs> we aren't sure that he wanted to, but I think he would have. <laughs> the crowds. For this event, which wasn't yearly, I, I have written yearly event, but it was between 503 and 528 Common Era, but not every year. We don't know how many Buddhist birthday parades there were, but everyone came into the streets. Commoners, nobility, and royalty all celebrated, and monks. So there was piety, there was gaiety and fun, and there was just this mixed crowd of people. The sources for this are very hard to see. They were very old. Um, um, prints and very difficult to um, piece together but uh, and I want you to see this these these are nomads and that's the nomads costuming I didn't know that when I started to paint this so my front guys right here I like to call this one the Chinese Elvis <laughs> he has his nomad costume on um, whereas the women in, in the back where are they oh I guess they're not going to show how come they didn't show Hmm. Well, I don't know. Anyway, these the crowd standing up here mostly are taken from the Chinese ancient um, pictures. This, by the way, this is the source book. If anybody wants to look through it, all of this stuff is in here. They are. See, so these came out of the um, texts that we got from China and other places. Okay, and then the temple. This Qingming temple is no longer. It was destroyed. But the Japanese copied this temple. And so we put together the Japanese currently standing temple with the white horse temple that does stand today in Luoyang. That's the colors of temples of that time and created this temple in the painting. That, that color we're assuming is accurate because that's what it would have been at the time. And there's some of our ladies watching. Musicians. These are the musicians that come from Kucha. Some of the cave art sources here. You, and by the way, if you look at that last face, look at that face. I mean, this is this is kind of what some of it does look like. It's pretty decrepit, and so there was a bit of um, artistic license <laughs> in order to fill them in. But the Kuchin performers here, and a Nubian, and in the middle, these knife uh, throwers and jugglers are probably Middle Eastern. 
interesting group of people. It's quite a quite an interesting group of people. The Apsara, we haven't mentioned. This is just a, a celestial dancer who's attending the scene to fill in the blank wall. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been pretty boring up there. <laughs> okay, I just want you to see the beginning and how this started. Um, when we first got the canvases, it was probably around June 1st, the end of May, I started sketching. Jay Wei would come over there just to push me. And it was good because I needed that push. I was kind of scared to start it. So we were sketching and sketching and sketching and sketching and sketching. And I was keeping a little diary. And one day I said, I just can't stand it anymore. We have to, you know, start painting. So we started with the dirt, the background, and the shadowing. And then we started, I started with the emperor panel. Let's see if this works. Originally, I had him dressed like this, July 10th. Oh, that's another thing. I would never have been this fast. My um, original projection date was January of 12th. But on July 5th, and yes, Mario, you can't put your back out cooking. I put my back out cooking. And the only chair in my house I could sit in was my paint chair. <laughs> so I painted a lot in July, and that's why this thing got done so quickly. She was glad. <laughs> but the emperor was wrong. The first clothing I took from a, uh, an emperor who was about 200 years before Emperor Zhuang Wu, and I didn't really know that. Um, and I said to Venerable, I, what I don't want is to like have the costuming so wrong that it would be like someone in India doing a painting of Obama's inauguration and there's some pilgrim standing there. Do you know what I mean? I mean, because that could have definitely happened. So when she brought me other uh, information, I upgraded him to the right costume later. Oh, this is the wall. I was in Sion the year before, and I had the Sion wall. What was interesting about it is that the stonework, up to a certain level, are even blocks. And after that, it's like they put together just a whole lot of mishmash of stones. So it has that two-tone appearance, which is great. And I, I really wanted to do that for our wall. And then the middle panel started. And there's the main Buddha. And the doors. The door backs were completed. And there it is, the finished triptych. Ta da! I had a ta da sound, but it was so scary that it was. You know, it's always, <laughs> and there it is, an actual Buddha birthday cake. You see that? I was able to find that. <laughs> and that's it. I think that's the end of my entire presentation. Yes, thank you.